It's uh, interesting being here for, I think, the fifth time. I, I was at the first little web speaking when it was about one-tenth the size it is today, about 250 people. And the company, I'm, MySpace, has been part of that conference ever since that first event. The first event, I remember MySpace was one of the innovative, disruptive startups that was changing the world and went on to become the world's largest social network. And today, uh, MySpace is, has a questionable future. It seems like a plane that is in a death spiral, and you are trying to rebuild the burning engines in mid-flight, trying to save it from hitting the ground. <laughs> and so uh, I'm pleased to present Mike uh, from MySpace. Yep, thanks for having me. So what, <laughs> what is it like trying to save a major company mm -hmm. that has had a significant presence in the world from hitting the ground. Sure. So MySpace has gone through an incredible amount of change. Um, early days, and we're talking about a company that was founded in, in 2003, right? So it's been, been around for quite some time. Um, obviously, pioneer in the social networking space, reached peaks of you know, 150 million plus users. Um, and then I think in my mind got very scattered, right? Um, had a very broad strategy. And we're at the point now with, we have 130 million active users today. So we still have this very, very substantial user base but we felt that we had to make a very, very big change in the business. So um, when I came in, we started evaluating a completely new strategy. We went through an eight-month process of building a new product to support that strategy, um, which is all focused around social entertainment, and we launched that product about 15 days ago. Yeah. So uh, we're very early days in it, but um, MySpace realizes we need to make a very, very big change, and that's both from a product perspective and a brand perspective. Let me ask, yeah. the, how many people have been to the new MySpace in the last two weeks in the audience here? Raise your hands. Only about one or two percent of this audience mm -hmm. has even seen your work that you've spent 18 months on. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what is significant about this new, new MySpace? And sure. Whether the, we're going to see you come back next year and have an audience that has more hands in it than sure. this? Absolutely. And it's been eight months, not 18. Okay. Uh, but uh, so it, it, I, I believe it will be more significant. We're specifically focused on a sub 35 year old audience demographic, right? So for those of you under 35, we're definitely targeting you to get involved. Um, but the new product is about entertainment. So what we believe is that this is not a single platform game um, and that we wanna be the best in a social entertainment experience, which means that you come to MySpace, you connect up with your favorite TV shows and your favorite movies, and then you create this personalized stream of entertainment for you. And uh, you know, our, our research so far, 15 days in, has been very, very positive. My belief is in the next year, if you ask that same question, you'd say, yeah, people would be saying, I use MySpace now to connect up to my favorite celebrities, my favorite TV shows, my favorite movies, my favorite musicians, and that'll be part of their routine of where they experience social. Yep. Reading the tech press about MySpace, I keep hearing that Rupert Murdoch is about to sell MySpace, wants to get out of the, the mm -hmm. company. Is he going to give you enough time to pull that plane out of the death spiral it's in and skim the trees like Steve Jobs did with Apple in 99, or is he going to just pull the plug and let you hit the ground? Fair question. So, I mean, News Corp as a business is very entrepreneurial, um, and they support the venture that we've taken on, and they realized that they needed to make a very, very big bet and make a very, very big change for where MySpace was headed. Um, they've given us an incredible amount of room, incredible amount of leverage. They're supporting us through all their different media properties. And it's something that, yeah, I believe that News Corp is going to give us the time and the leverage we need to make this thing uh, amazing. So um, I feel very supported by News Corp. Yeah. Tell me about the F Facebook integration that you just made. Uh, what, is, what was that like? Because Facebook, you and Facebook were in a, in a, a battle for yeah. the social network of the, of the century. You lost that battle, and now you're making deals with them. That's What's that right. like? Well, I think first off, we have to, we, you know, as a company, we had to realize that we were not going to win in social networking. Um, the second principle that you really have to believe is that the world will become social, right? The web will become social. Mobile will become social. Um, so we started saying, well, seeing our audience is using MySpace to connect to musicians. They're connecting to bands. They're connecting to uh, content. So we said, we want to be the best at connecting to content. Well, in the ability of doing that and creating a very personal experience, we said, wouldn't it be great if we could work with Facebook so that if a user comes over from Facebook, they can bring all their likes. So if they like the Family Guy TV show and they like Glee and they like these bands, what if we create that personal entertainment experience through their Facebook data? We called Facebook and said, look, you know, we are going a completely different direction. 
We are not focused on being a social network. We're not worried about internal communication tools. We want to be the best at this entertainment experience. We walked them through the product. They loved it. Um, and they basically said, sure, we'll do a deal with you where you can basically allow users through Facebook Connect, as many of their partners do, to create this very personalized experience. We've been excited about it. And we found that our audience that have used that product have significantly higher levels of engagement after using Facebook Sync. Yeah. Right? So it's something that I think has been a fantastic thing for our audience. And yeah, I mean, we had to kind of change our philosophy in regards to our competitors, but it's been a big, you know, a big positive change for us. Um, what, what else are you going to do with that Facebook uh, partnership? Because today I, I just got back on my space and I yeah. brought all my likes over mm -hmm. and it did some things, mm -hmm. right? But it didn't seem very integrated throughout the entire experience. Yep. What's the next three months for that partnership going to be good, like? It's a good question. So there's no doubt that we are very early stages of this product and it's important to realize that that 130 million user base, a lot of them use MySpace for social networking, right? And the new product that we're launching, it's part of kind of threading the needle on this change is actually giving them a very new experience. So we've been very uh, tentative on how we roll these products out. With that said, you'll be seeing more coming from the way that we embrace third-party platforms, be that integration of Facebook-like technology, be it, uh, us pushing different data sources to Twitter, and working with other social platforms, because we basically want to be the de facto destination for social entertainment. We want to utilize all the other platforms available to be the best at that. Yeah. In the last year, since we were at the web last year, mm -hmm. this device has come out. Mm -hmm. And other devices, Google TV, Apple TV, BoxyBox, they're changing how we uh, consume entertainment media. Yep. What are you guys doing with this with these platforms? So a, a few different things and I think what's what's amazing for me is when I think about the the definition of web 2 and I think about the change into web 3 I get very transfixed on both kind of mobile and portable devices and the application of social technology um, to, to digital experiences. Those are the two areas that we focus heavily on and I believe that will impact all of our businesses. Today, a third of MySpace's daily audience uh, interacts with MySpace via mobile. Part of that's via smartphones, part of that's via iPhones and Android devices and Microsoft devices and, of course, you know, tablets. Um, we're taking a little bit of a different approach with mobile. So we're actually creating a mobile application network. We have four or five micro applications we've released on the iPhone. We have a music video application we've re released on the iPad. We have new applications coming for Android and we do have some test applications that we're looking at for Google TV for kind of social media consumption. They're all specifically around entertainment, right? So we want to, again, be very, very focused on being the best within that category, which I think is just you know, part of our core strategy. But there's no doubt that one of our highest producing teams inside, the, inside of MySpace is building more and more mobile applications and finding the right way to launch applications, get users engaged in them. It's a, it's a big part of our business. In your pocket, you have the new uh, app that's coming out in I a do. week, right? Yeah, I do. And what is that app going to do when we get it in a week? Sure. So, uh, you know, there's a few kind of big changes. Um, today, for instance, if you come to MySpace, you can interact with the content whether you're logged in or not. Right, so if you want to go to your favorite band's page and listen to music, you actually don't have to log in. We have a lot of our audience that uses MySpace without ever logging in. Um, on the phone, it's always, always been behind a login structure. So the new mobile application will allow you to use it without logging in. And we also have a new stream system that will basically pay attention to your iTunes library and create you a rich stream of music content based on your preferences on your phone, whether or not you do or don't log in. Right, so some very simple features that will really enrich your life around music, around entertainment content that will pull right off the library that's already existing on the phone. At home, I'm sitting with this device watching Twitter mm -hmm. during big entertainment events like the yep. MTV Music Awards, the Grammy Awards, and you see thousands of tweets streaming down the screen. Yeah. What are you going to do with those tweets in MySpace? So one of, the, one of the big core product changes for us is a product called Topic Pages. And what it does is it, it pays attention to kind of professional and semi-professional content sources all over the web. Um, and it pays attention to what people are talking about. So if they like this photo about Glee or they're really excited about this new article that came out on the Neutron, we aggregate them into our Topic Page system. Um, that's a fantastic product for us, but it's also important for us to understand what people are talking about and inject ourselves in certain cases into that conversation, right? So we do listen to all the open social platforms and we do take a lot of time to pay attention to the links that are being shared and what's trending and who's influencing what. Yeah. So although today, um, you're not gonna see a lot of that data currently live inside MySpace, um, in the future you will be seeing more and more. Yeah, we're still having trouble getting you on. Can we just pull up the homepage and, and show off the new, sure. uh, the new homepage and show that on the screen? Is that possible? Yeah.
I'm not sure if they're going to pull it up for us. Um, is it up? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it looks like they're having technical problems. Okay. Um, video, Google's MySpace, or mm -hmm. uh, Google's, uh, <laughs> Google's MySpace. <laughs> YouTube sure. has really become a, a place to consume the kinds of entertainment content that mm -hmm. you're trying to uh, stay relevant in. Sure. How, what are you going to do with video over the next couple months? So, I mean, our, our goal, again, is to put your entertainment preferences through a social lens. So if you happen to really love clips from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, uh, we want to bring those clips to you directly within your stream within MySpace. Whether or not it's being hosted on YouTube or MySpace or Hulu, uh, we want the ability to deliver you that personal experience. So my goal isn't to have the largest library by any means of entertainment content. My goal is that when you come to MySpace and you say, I love this show, I love this actor, I love this movie, that you get all that content within your lens on MySpace regardless of where it's from. Yeah. Right? So YouTube, in this case, becomes a partner of ours. I'm watching Twitter as we're talking. Neil Ward Social said absolutely nothing mentioned yet about the, the really bad, disgusting compression, he said. The fundamental reason that he thinks artists are going to leave MySpace. What are you going to do to make sure that you are the preeminent, best place to come and listen to music? Right, that is critical. Um, so I think that in certain cases, we're optimized for listening. In certain cases, we're optimized for discovery. And it's an important nuance. Um, my goal is that you come to MySpace and you learn about new bands, you listen to some new bands, you connect to those bands, we show you music that's like other music you like, but chances are when you go to your full consumption experience, you're going to purchase that song, you're going to purchase it through a partner of ours, through iTunes, through Amazon, or through another third-party service, yep. and then you're going to take it with you on your phone or on your mobile device. So it is important that we do have high-quality music, and we are looking at modifying the way we do our compression so that basically users can get this high-quality experience with song play. Um, but with that said, I don't want to be the place that replaces iTunes, right? I want to be the place that you learn about new music, and then you take that with you to wherever your music consumption preference is. Yeah. It's a very different nuance, but it means that I don't need to be the best in an iTunes alternative. Uh, one of the places that... Uh, one of the apps that I've seen working in the world um, mm -hmm. is Auditorium which is a great iPad app yeah. to discover new music. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do acquisitions of small, innovative companies like that? So we've done a few in the last year. We're typically looking for teams or kind of uh, specific kind of pillar technologies that we can integrate within MySpace, and we're always looking at more. I'd say mobile is one of the most interesting spaces for us. Um, so we continue to look, and we are aware of those guys, and they're doing some, some really neat things, actually. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. What else is, is happening in, in terms of MySpace? It sounds like you've laid some people off. Are you, are you looking at doing more layoffs? Are you talking about what you're doing with the team to remake the team? Sure. So, you know, when I started, uh, you know, roughly 18 months ago, we went through a fairly substantial downsizing. Um, my belief is that the only way that MySpace goes through a reinvention is to truly take an entrepreneurial approach to product development, to the way the company operates, to our complete operational style. Um, there's no doubt that the new product have different needs relative to our staffing around the new product in all groups. So we're always looking at optimizing against that. Um, so yes. I, I, I can't answer <laughs> okay. yes or no. What I can say is that it, it's different, right? Okay. Um, and what I'll say it's, you know, that I think is more interesting is saying, yeah, that there's not very many brands on the web that have ever made this type of shift, yeah. right? And I think what's, you know, what's delicate, and it's, it's, it's a good nuance for everyone to kind of understand, is when you create platforms that you rely on people to contribute to, to kind of become part of their lives, it becomes very difficult to change those platforms because people get very connected to those identities. Um, we've done a very um, big change here, and we've definitely upset portions of our community, and we've delighted portions of our community. Yeah. Um, but as we all move into this world where our audience contributes back to our product and makes that product part of them, we have to realize that you make certain commitments to that audience. And it means changing that is very, very difficult. Right? And we've gone through a large process on that, but now, you know, now in addition to changing the product, we now have to change the brand. So this is something new that really hasn't been done on the web before. Yeah. And I think as we all move our products to becoming social, it becomes something that we all have to deal with, which is this relationship between us and our audience, who owns what, who has influence on what, and how we guide them to the best experience. Tell me what you're learning from the numbers of that new design, Be uh, because it's been out for 15 days now. Yeah. It's not very old. Can you give us some numbers, what you're learning sure. from that new design? Sure. Um, there, there are some really interesting things we've learned. Um, so we have a fairly sophisticated data team. Um, and we, we divide our audience into people that are basically growing in usage, um, steady in usage, or lapsing in usage. We've definitely seen that by launching a fairly substantial new product, the people that were lapsing in usage are becoming more steady state which is a fantastic indicator. 
We've also noticed that on some of our core initiatives, if we get users to connect to them, uh, they get more engaged in the product, like topic pages. So someone comes in and puts in their movie or TV preferences, they come in through Facebook, they come to MySpace more frequently. We've also noticed this element of curators. So I think we all can see that the web is becoming infinitely large and that the content of the web is infinitely large. MySpace, like many other platforms, is really looking to our curator audience to drive engagement, meaning that when you come to MySpace, I want to connect you to the best person in independent music. Yeah. We've seen that if we connect you to curators that bring in the best content that you're interested in, you come back substantially more frequently than you do if you don't get that connection. Yeah. And that's something that's true for us. And I think that's true for all social platforms. Right? So we know as a fact, if you connect to curators, your repeat visits go dr dramatically up. Um, we also know that if you previously were using MySpace specifically for social networking, and your goal was to go there and talk directly with your friends and share your photos, that audience is going to be going away. Right? So what we we've divided our audience into different segments, and we've recognized that this segment of users that have been using MySpace for six years for social networking only, eventually they attrit. Right? And now we're at the point of basically finding which ones we can rescue and put them into this content experience, which ones we can grow, um, how we track new users, and then knowing which audience we have to let go. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to this audience because they haven't tried your new uh, design <laughs> and they haven't seen your new, what you've been doing. Sure. Give us a one minute pitch. What, what should we try out on the new MySpace? Sure. Well, I mean, you should go to MySpace and you should search for one of your favorite TV shows or an upcoming movie. So if you search for Tron, and you're going to see a solution that basically shows you all the photos and all the articles happening all over the web around Tron. You can follow it. It's going to create a personal stream for you. And then you can participate in that conversation around Tron or around Glee. Maybe you want to look at you know, a curator that's talking about independent music. You can follow them. And suddenly, you have a rich content source customized for you on MySpace. You can get on your phone and on your, on your computer. Um, and I think it'll become an enriching part of your daily routine of finding out about new things that interest you. You should definitely give it a try. Send us feedback. Tell if you like it. And I think you'll find that each month we're releasing more and more new features. So we're only 15 days into this new product. We've already released Facebook. We have another big release coming next week, which is our new iPhone app. And then we have more and more things that you'll be seeing, honestly, week after week. And we're running the company hands-on, operationally, just as a startup. And we're rolling more and more features as, as fast as we can to support this vision. Very cool. I think we're out of time. The clock reset on me. So do we still have three minutes left? Is, is that true? OK. Well, we'll keep going until uh, Loie comes sure. out here and pulls this off the stage. What do you guys think about this? Do, does Mike have a chance at winning you back over to trying out MySpace? <laughs> Crickets. The answer is, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> yep. Um, at that first La Web, mm -hmm. you guys were really known as the ones getting in the grungy um, nightclubs and, and bars and mm -hmm. finding those really cool bands. Mm -hmm. On the current MySpace, I don't see a lot of that weird, grungy, new music that I haven't seen on an Apple commercial, for sure. instance. What are you going to do to get back to that roots to really find us the best music that we haven't yep. yet seen? Yeah, I mean, we're, we, we have the largest catalog today of independent music, just across the whole globe. Um, but we do need to get better at surfacing music that interests you. And recommendations and understanding what's trending at this moment, not only what's trending as in large numbers, but what's getting velocity in small numbers, is a big part of the new product. It's something we have to get very, very good at. Um, and there's no doubt that you can come to MySpace and sure you can find out about the Black Eyed Peas, but what about that next band and how do we reveal that to you? That's something we need to get good at. Yeah. And I'd say that we're only okay at it right now. Yeah. Here in Europe, Spotify is white hot. It was yeah. white hot last year and it's continued to be that way, partly because we want our music so fast. Mm -hmm. Pandora in the United States is the same way. I, I pull up a, a station and it starts playing yeah. right away. What are you going to do to make sure you're the relevant social network, not social network, but the relevant network we go to to play our music. Well, I don't, I think that you'll be, we'll, we'll become a relevant network for you to find new music. We'll be a relevant network to get information on the music you love and the artists you love. Um, we will have playability, but I think your de facto player is still gonna be alternative platforms. I don't, I don't believe that we're gonna solve that problem for you. Very cool. Um, yeah. What's next? And uh, what, what do you give your own chances of success of pulling that plane out of that death yeah. spiral and skimming the trees like Steve Jobs did with Apple and pulling off? Well, I mean, I, I, I think that when I started, I definitely realized that we had a very tough product, right? It was a difficult design. It was hard to use. It was hard to innovate on. It had a bad technical platform. There was a lot of problems. 
Um, I believe now that I use the product, I see the way the audience is using the product, it's a great new product. Um, it has a part in people's lives and it's exciting and fun and easy and beautiful and, and nice to use. It's a good product experience. Um, I think the big challenge we have now is a brand challenge. How do we go out to the entire world and say, you used to think of MySpace as a social network, we now want you to think about it as a social entertainment product. Um, how do we get you to make that jump? And I think that's the, that's the big thing that we need to tackle. We have an amazing new campaign starting tomorrow that'll be the beginning of us kind of bringing that out to the world. Um, and it uses the product and so it's a great new system. Um, but I think that's the biggest challenge that the company faces is actually really educating the world about this new brand because we very much have a new product that supports the promise. Yeah. What else are you seeing happen? Or is Lloyd coming out? Because I, I think we're done with time. and the, the clock is out, but I wanted to wait for... Come on out, Loic. <laughs> Are we done? Okay, thank you very much. Cool. Thanks. Um, thanks for no coming out. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike.